everyone welcome back to my channel so in 2023 arabian fragrances really had a moment i feel like they're super affordable and i haven't encountered one that doesn't perform incredibly well Latafa is probably one of the largest Arabian fragrance houses available to us in Europe and North America, or at least they have the largest selection because I feel like Latafa comes out with a new fragrance every single month. They also seem to create really nice inspired by fragrances for very high end niche perfumes. And sometimes they do this really, really well. So if you're interested in finding out my top Latafa choices, stay tuned. But first, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can support me and stay up to date on all my weekly uploads. So to begin, I've purchased all of these on Amazon and they've all been 30 pounds and under. And that's mainly because I got them before they started going viral. Um, so they may have gone up in price slightly. So if you're in Europe, there are several other retailers that sell Arabian fragrances at a much lower price than Amazon. And if you're in the US, I know Joma Shop does quite a bit of the Arabian fragrances as well. So just check there if the price is super high on Amazon. All right, so first up, we have Oud Mood and Sheikh Al Shayuk. I believe that's how you say it. So these are very, very similar. Um, to a naive nose, they smell the same. It's Oud and Caramel, and that's it. Oud Mood is slightly more musky, giving it a more masculine tone. And Sheikh Al Shayuk is slightly sweeter. To be fair, a more accurate description of the Sheikh Al Shayuk would be Oud and Honey Dip Caramel. And there's no honey notes in this, but the saffron kind of blends with the caramel and gives it this like uh, airy, ethereal vibe. But make no mistake, this is a heavy hitter. Like, this is one that will last you even after you wash it off. Oud Mood is also a heavy hitter, but I just prefer Shake because it's just less musky. Even though, as you can see, my dent in Oud Mood is crazy, so that should tell you <laughs> that I love them both equally, but Shake, she's my girl. Moving on, now we have Oud for Glory, and Oud for Glory is from the Fadi Al Oud line. This is said to be a dupe of Initio's Oud for Greatness. Now, I haven't been able to get my hands on Oud for Greatness, even though it's on my wish list, so Christmas is around the corner, so if anybody's listening, you know. <laughs> Many people say that Oud for Glory is just a watered down version of Oud for Greatness, but as a standalone, Oud for Glory, uh, it just smells luxe. It's strictly saffron and oud, which has, is always like a beautiful scent combination. But not only is it saffron and oud, it's also like on a bed of patchouli. Now I know oud and patchouli are very polarizing notes, but in this, it is, it's formulated so well. It's like, it's not sharp, it's very smooth and mellow. It's just great. <laughs> Usually when I got this perfume though, I thought I got scammed because I could barely smell it and I was so disappointed. I just put it back on the shelf and didn't look at it until months later when um, I went to declutter it and I gave it one last try. And to my surprise, it blew me away. Like <laughs> it was not the same perfume that it was two months before. A word of warning though, um, don't overspray this. Um, do not overspray this. Do not overspray this. Please do not overspray this. You will have the police called on you for assault. 
<laughs> for insulting people's noses because this is that strong. If this Oud for Glory is a watered down version of Oud for Greatness, I can't imagine how strong Oud for Greatness actually is. It's insane. Like, even now, I sprayed this on the back of my hand before I started filming, and it's taken over. It's all I can smell now. And it was one spray. One spray. So, yeah. <laughs> That's all I have to say. You have been warned. <laughs> Another from the Badi Al Oud line, this is Amethyst. And Amethyst is meant to be a inspired version of Initio's Atomic Rose. And again, I haven't been able to get my hands on Atomic Rose because I'm a university student and I can't be buying up expensive fragrance like that. <laughs> but Christmas is around the corner, so if any of my family watches, yeah. <laughs> so Amethyst and I had a bit of a tussle in the beginning because she was giving rubber, okay, fresh latex. But just like Oud for Glory, I was about to declutter her because I literally got them on the same day. I was about to declutter her and then boom, out of nowhere, she just let me see the real her. And now I get a very jammy rose with Oud and some zesty pink pepper in the beginning. And that rubberiness that I got um, it, when I first received it, it's nowhere to be found, to be fair. Like, there's maybe a slight um, hint of it, but that's only maybe the beginning um, 10 to 15 minutes. After that, it goes away, and you're stuck with the pink pepper, the jammy rose, and the oud. It's, it's wonderful. I think this may be my favorite out of all the latafas I have and I have probably about 10 or 15 latafas obsession is not the word to describe what is going on <laughs> with me and this brand and just like Oud for Glory this one's a beast mode it's long lasting and for sure it's very unique there's nothing else in my collection that smells like this even remotely but I will say this one is not a, a safe blind buy at all. I think you have to be uh, an appreciator of fragrance to like this one. It doesn't smell bad, but it's just not mass appealing, like say the uh, Oud for Glory would be. So this next one, I'm gonna have to enter a picture of uh, because I finished the bottle, but I think I accidentally threw it away, but this one is Anna Abiel and it is easily my most complimented fragrance out of my um, Arabian fragrance collection. It's said to be a dupe of Baccarat Rouge 540, but to me it's so much better than Baccarat. Anna Abiel has that same um, ambery sweetness as BR 540, but with some added citrus. I wore this over the summer non-stop, literally non-stop, that's why I have none left. <laughs> this had me feeling so feminine and girly when I wore it. It's definitely a pretty girl scent. It has that um, airiness like BR540, but with amped up sweetness and again, like I said, the citruses, but the citrus it's not the main focus, the ambery, ambroxony ness <laughs> just like BR540. And instead of having that um, burnt sugary quality about it, it is more like a melted sugar with a, a drop of citrus in there. But you know how Baccarat is very airy and ethereal and just like fleeting, right? Ana Abiyad is more grounded. It's still light and pretty, but it's, it's just a little more grounded. I don't know how else to explain it other than, other than it's just, it's not in the air. And again, it's long lasting, projecting, all of that. 
like are, if you <laughs> are you guys noticing a trend with these Arabian fragrances because yeah they're deserving of all the hype that they get now if you don't know this one you might be living in space <laughs> this is Hamra and it's said to be a dupe uh, for the infamous Angel Share by Killian. This is a cinnamon bomb. Okay. It's a cinnamon sugar bomb. If Captain Crunch was 60% cinnamon and 40% sugar, this is what it would smell like. <laughs> I don't too much think um, this is like Angel Share, to be honest, though. Angel Share is much smoother and more boozy. And the cinnamon is much more toned down in Angel Share. Um, but despite that, Hamra is, as a standalone, is amazing. And to be fair, it's like the perfect Christmas time, Christmas day perfume, Christmas party perfume. So yeah, <laughs> perfect for this time of year. This is also one that if you spray this on your clothes, like on your, um, your winter coat or whatever, you'll be good for the whole entire week. No joke. But if you're not like a huge fan of cinnamon, it's okay because the cinnamon dominance <laughs> only lasts maybe about 30 minutes or so. After that, um, you can still tell it's there, but it's just not as in your face. It's not as... Um... Hummer's also really lovely to layer with um, vanilla perfume. So like your Bianco Lattes, your Vanilla 28, um, what else? Like your Strictly Spicy Vanillas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just try it. Trust me. So yeah, these are my top Latafa choices. My best of best, my A1 day ones. Well, my A1s because some of these weren't big ones <laughs> but yeah um yeah they're affordable they're readily accessible and we're in the christmas season so christmas is what like two weeks away if you haven't gotten people gifts yet check out the arabian fragrances they'll be there within two days um just look at the reviews uh, mash them to the personality of the person that you're buying it for and boom easy gift and unique gift as well I don't think people are really out here gifting fragrances like like this <laughs> These are my the top of picks In the comments, let me know what your top picks are. I'm interested to see because I know there's a wide Selection of Latafa. So I know there's some that I haven't even heard of yet. So let me know. I'm interested to hear it All right that's it for me today. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.